Yeah, yeah, and I would say maybe um, after, you can kind of so you can get some notes down here. Okay, graphing linear relations. Does anyone remember what a relation is? Just give me the simple definition, Nick. What's a relation? Set of ordered pairs. And then this word linear, it has a word in there that we're going to see a lot in this lesson. Yeah, line. Line. That's the word we're going to be looking at a lot. And then graphing, I hope you realize that's why you have your graphing paper, because we're going to put them on a graph. Okay, uh, we're going to go to example number one, really just get this started up. Example number one, can somebody read for me the instructions for A? What do you have to do on part A? Peter? Find four solutions for the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1. Write these solutions as ordered pairs. OK, what they want you to do there is they want you to write a relation. How do I know they want me to write a relation? Get me the set of ordered pairs. All right, B. B, who can uh, read that real quick? Scout, can you do that for me? Okay, so once you get your four solutions for A, you're going to want to graph those for B. Okay, this is what I want you guys to do. Begin, um, draw a little table, and um, it should be able to fit the info that they have there on page 385. So don't write too small and don't go too big. Just make yourself uh, enough space so you can work those out. And I want you to divide into three columns. The first column and the last column are pretty thin, as in they're not very wide at all. It's that second column, column, the middle column, that needs to be, needs to have those wide margins. And on all your problems that you're working out with me and on your own, you're going to have these three columns. The first column always has a heading of x. It's going to represent your x values. Does anyone know what we call the set of x values? The domain. This is where your domain goes. Does anyone know what this would be? Y. It's for your y values or your range. You're going to put your range and your domain values there um, in the respective categories. All right. Uh, what was that equation that they gave me? What's the equation there, Chelsea? It's, it's y equals negative 2x plus 1. All right. y equals negative 2x plus 1. Okay. In this problem, isn't y all by itself on this equation? Yes. Okay, you always want to get y by itself before you go on to this next step. So in this case, thank you, they did it for me, no problem. But if it's not by itself, what do you need to do? Get it by, get it by itself. itself, so solve for y. Okay, and we'll go over that more tomorrow. All right, that tells me that y equals negative 2x plus 1. Okay, right, y equals negative 2x plus 1. So the heading on the middle column is whatever y equals, negative 2x plus 1. So whatever y equals, you put negative 2x plus 1. In this case, that's what y equals. Like, uh, why would I do this? All right, how many of you like being creative? Like you like just doing your, kind of your own thing and kind of veering off the path? It's, it's cool because you're going to be able to do it today. All right, in our examples, we're going to kind of do the same thing other than... Uh, toward the end, but on your homework, you be as creative as, as creative as you want to be. But they want me to have how many solutions for A? How many do they want? Four of them. Okay. Now, when you're on your homework, you have to pick four numbers for X. You get to pick four domain values. But I recommend, and I actually, there these are what I want you to do, and then I'll give you some recommendations. You need to pick the number zero as one of your domain values. And I do that because I want to help you out. Okay, It's re very helpful when you pick x equals 0. And you want to have at least one positive value and one negative value. Okay, One of each, and then obviously you're going to have two of another, or one or the other, so make sure you get that. All right, what we're going to do, though, uh, we're going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 2. We're just picking x values, and in the homework, I'm telling you once again, you get to pick your x values. You can pick whatever you want for those, um, as long as one's positive, one's negative, and uh, you pick zero. Then I'm going to draw my little rows here. I have four rows. 
because I'm going to get four solutions. Okay, so you guys understand what you're doing right now. All you have to do first, get y by itself, put whatever y equals up here in the middle column, and then you pick four x values, your choice, other than those stipulations I gave you. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually working out four problems. And you're like, oh, four problems, you got to be kidding me. On one number? Yeah. I hope you realize it's really not that bad. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this expression down here. I'm going to put negative 2 times parenthesis, or times x, plus 1. What I do is I replace x with parentheses. No matter where x is, I'm going to replace it with parentheses. And according to what I picked, what should x equal in here? Negative, negative 2. So I'll put negative 2 in there. And then I'm going to rewrite this three more times with a blank for x in the form of parentheses. And there's a reason why I'm telling you to do that, because it gets harder. They're not this easy. And so if you put parentheses, you'll be safe. What number should fit in this second blank? Negative, Negative 1. And the third blank? Zero. And the fourth? Zero. OK, so you guys get what I'm getting there? OK. And then you have to simplify each one of those expressions. Like, oh, man. Can we do it together real quick? What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive, Positive 4 plus 1? Five. So 5 is your y value. How in the world did you get that, Mr. Like, where would y come from? Do you remember this equation right here? If you pick negative 2 for x, what's negative 2 times negative 2? 4 plus 1? So y equals 5. All right, what's negative 2 times negative 1? 2 plus 1? 3. Three. Three. That's your y value. And see, I like picking 0 because what's negative 2 times 0? Zero? 0. 0 plus 1? One. All right. What's negative 2 times positive 2? Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1? Negative 3. Negative 3. That's right. Just make sure you're getting those subtractions, additions, multiplications, divisions all straightened out. Okay. Table's filled. I feel proud now. Okay, what did they want on um, example 1A? What, what was the instruction there for what you need to do for that? Peter? Find four solutions for the equation. Oh. And write those solutions like ordered pairs. Oh, yeah, ordered pairs. I basically want you to write me a relation. Do you guys remember what a relation is? Like Set of ordered pairs. pairs. You know what the first ordered pair is? Negative 2. 5. That's one ordered pair. How did I get that? Here's an x value, here's a y value, they go together. The next one, everyone. Negative 1, 3. The third. Thank you, you 4. The last one. Thank you, you 10. Okay. Um, do you guys get how I get my ordered pairs? Okay, that is part of your solution. And the answer I said to A gives you help on how to get B. What did it say to do for B now? Graph it. Graph it. Okay. Now on your graph paper. This is what we're going to do in our graph here. So if you haven't been using it, you need to use it now. I want you to draw an accordant plane. I'm going to do it here on my whiteboard. And uh, some people ask, like, Mr. A, how far do I need to go? Like, how far do I go on the x-axis, on the y-axis? Well, look at my numbers. Do any of them go past like 5 or like negative 5? Nope. So I can go 5. 5 is good enough. Okay. And uh, for you guys, make sure you use those little tick marks that they already give you. Don't try to make these really tiny tick marks because that throws off your answer. Okay. Um, good idea. There you go. Okay. Um, once you get that, go ahead and put those points on that graph, and you should notice something about them if you graph them correctly.
okay, if you're not done, you might be getting there. Do you guys notice anything about these four points? Yeah, if you connect them, what are you going to form? A line. Okay, go ahead and connect them. Do your best to make a line. And draw arrowheads on both sides. Ah, that was okay. Let's make the dots bigger. Now it's a line. Okay. Waiting up for everyone to finish that up because I'm going to ask a few questions about that line. I remember doing this when I was in middle school. I remember doing the points and then connecting them all with a line, arrowheads on both sides. And then I realized something uh, during that time. I'm like, why do we always put line? Why do we always connect them with a line? Is it just because they form a line, you just connect them? It's a linear graph, but like, why is it linear? Why can't it just be a, a point graph? It's points. Because the word line, yeah, but why? Like, I'm, I, I'm, Nick, I'm asking deep questions here. I'm struggling. They made us do it. Okay, uh, yeah, Dave. Okay, there is, there is a point to positive, negative. Remember relationships, positive, negative, no relationships? What kind of relationship is that, by the way? What do you guys think? Negative. Negative relationship. Okay, so that is part of it. Yep, Josh? Let's show that it, like, the equation goes on forever. It, it does go on forever. Those arrows make it go on forever. Okay, this is what I want you to do. This is where your creativity comes in already. I want you to pick any other number you want for x and just add one. You don't have to do this for your homework. You're only going to have to do four. But just pick any other value for x that we haven't used already. You pick. Just so if you go too far, you're going to see that it makes it a little harder on yourself. But like you can pick 3, negative 3, positive 1. Just pick any value. We already have 0. Just pick any number. Any number you want. Put it in this table. Figure out what y is going to give you. And uh, we'll see what happens. So you pick your number. I'll pick mine. Yeah, go, or, yeah, go ahead and graph it on that same one. All right, how many of you picked three for your x value? Anyone pick one? Did anyone pick negative three? Did anyone pick anything other than those three that I just mentioned? What'd you pick? I picked negative four. Negative four? Nine? Negative nine? Nine? Oh. You wanted to. Okay. Uh, can we do this here? On your graph, I want you to put the point for what you got, that 3, negative 5 for me and some of you, and then whatever points you found out. What do you notice about your answer? It still fits on the line. Now, how many points do you think we have represented in this classroom? I think we have the 4 plus five, and I think a couple of you, like maybe nine points, right? Mm -hmm. How many points are there on this line? Mm -hmm. I want you to give me all of them. Z. No, sorry, not Z, no, no, no. Five. I want you to give me all, of, all the points. A, pi. Okay, pi. We just had lunch. Oh my I'm not really good for pi right now, but you already did. Did you guys draw me a line? <laughs> Okay, this line represents all the points that would be a part of that solution. All of them. I mean, I'm talking all of them. All the infinite points that you could have had are represented here. Even with these arrowheads going off in both directions, it's showing what all of them are. That means this. Can you listen up? Look up here. Even the point 1 half, 1 half, which is right here, that's on the line. And also here, negative, or excuse me, 2 2 would be on line, something like that right here. These are all the points on the line, fractions, decimals, whole numbers, integers. They all are on this line. You just gave me infinity in a drawing. That's what you did. So how many points are on this line, everyone? An infinite. infinite number. Remember how I'm making you, uh, I'm letting you pick your numbers? The reason I can do that is because if we all did it right in this problem, you all pick different numbers, you got your values, what should we all have? The same line. 
right? So that's why I'm giving you flexibility because we should all get the same, excuse the same answer. Zero, a positive and a negative? Yeah, zero, a positive number, a negative number, and then whatever other number you want to pick. Okay, let's do another one here. Make sure you guys are good. Um, on page 388, we're going to do number eight. On number eight, do you notice there's a table right underneath? Did they give you the x values? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you use those x values. On other problems, I don't give you any x values. So what do you do? Make you get to use the y values. You get to pick them. <laughs> pick the x values. You get to choose what your x values are. Okay. So number eight. We have our x column, our y column. And then um, our equation is y equals x plus 4. So on my equation, did I already solve for y? Like, do I already have y by itself? Mm -hmm. Yep. So now the heading of the middle column should be x plus 4. This is x plus 4. And then you pick your values. I'll pick mine. Can we oh, sorry. They actually, no, they actually gave them to you. I forgot. On this problem, they gave you the x but values. If they don't you can use every single time the same ones. Uh, okay. uh, that's not fun, though, is it? I do. I want a graph. I want a nice line. And since you all have graph paper, you should be able to give me a line. Starting. Oh, yeah. Number eight. Yeah, you can go ahead. OK, so they gave me negative 1, 0, 1, 3. And I put my parentheses plus 4, parentheses plus 4, parentheses plus 4. Yes, graph it, parentheses plus 4. I put the numbers for x, negative 1, 0, 1, 3. And all I had to do is simplify each one of those expressions. Negative, four, negative 1 plus 4? Yes, 3. 0 plus 4? Four. 4. 1 plus 4? Five. 5. 3 plus 4 is 7. Okay. Why is he at 6? I don't, I don't know how to answer that question, honestly. This. Okay. Uh, what's the first ordered pair here, then? Negative 1, 3. Negative 1, 3. Second ordered pair? 0, 4. Third? 1, 5. Don't worry, it's up here. 1, 5. And then the last? Three, seven. Um, once you get that, you can graph it. Yes, graph it, please. And uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll come check your graphs to see if they're doing okay. Now, if they do not form a line, either I put the points in the wrong spot or my points were wrong. So I have to evaluate that based on my answers here. Yes, ma'am? Um, uh oh. Uh, I did one, two, five, and it doesn't form a line. Okay. Just one, five. I think it's the second point. Zero, four would be right here. I think you switched the directions. Okay, I'm done putting points on this board. Uh, I need volunteers to help me out with putting points on that graph. Josh, one, negative one, three, please. Negative one three. Chelsea, you'll do the second one. 
Peter the third, Sarah Harris the fourth. Just hand it off to that next person. I'll remind you in just a moment. So negative one, three, then Chelsea. You're going to get zero, four. And then Peter is going to be one, five. And then who is fourth? Sarah Harris. Sorry, I picked the people. One, five. And then, um, yeah, Sarah, if you can come do three, seven. Um, no, thank you for volunteering, though. Um, can someone who has a steady hand connect those points? Mr. A struggles with a steady hand. All right, Betsy, come on up. Connect those, and then put double arrows on each end. Wow, that was steady. Okay, fine. Um, you are the official line drawer of the class. Okay. Good job. How many of you got that on your graph? You got that. How many points are represented there? Infinite. 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 How many of you get what you're doing here? Um, can I ask you this question, see if you guys were really thinking even about yesterday? What kind of relationship was is this? Positive. positive. Automatically positive. Why is it positive? From left to right, it's going... Uh, if it's going downward, what kind of relationship is it? Listen, can I give you something here, a little bit of encouragement? If you really understand that, that that's, sorry, that's positive and that's negative, that's actually like algebra one stuff that we still struggle with next year. I'm telling you right now. If you can see that that's positive, that's a good thing. If you cannot see that that's positive, you need to keep practicing this mentally because from left to right, where is it going? Positive. From left to right, where is it going? Positive. Up. Yeah, uh, up. Because it is positive. There you go. Okay, uh, your assignment, I changed it up from Sycamore, but um, it's fewer problems. You need to do numbers 23 to 28. Yeah, and you're going to need a separate piece of graph paper. I could give it to you, or if you have it, you can use it. This graph paper you just used is for your notes. Page 389. Do you have a stapler? I do. It's back there by the sharpener and tissue.